Hey, JJ here. Today I'm gonna to talk about five skills of a great leader. And these are probably five that maybe you haven't really considered before. Here we go. So if you're watching this, you're probably that kind of person that truly wants to figure out how can I become the most effective leader that I possibly can become. And there are probably a lot of reasons for that. Number one, maybe it's you're an executive of a company or a manager of a company, you're an entrepreneur, you've started your own business and you have employees that you need to serve and lead. Or maybe you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home father and you want to figure out how can I best serve my family? How can I best lead my children? Maybe you're someone that truly is very involved in your community. You just want to know what's the best way that I can show up for the people that I can lead in this community to make this community an even more extraordinary place. The fact is most of us have at least one other person we need to lead. And all of us have at least one person that we must lead and that person is ourselves we truly are leaders of ourselves first and foremost because think about it like if i can't lead myself how am i going to lead another human being if i can't lead myself if i can't influence myself to get things done or to produce a result how in the heck can i have the responsibility to lead a team or an organization or a group of people so the fact is we all need to figure out how can we lead ourselves first and foremost, but today's really about how do we have specific characteristics of a great leader. And by the way, these are five things that a great leader has or is doing that most of us probably aren't considering on a regular basis. You may have heard about them before, but when you think of great leader, just start to imagine for me right now, for yourself right now, what do you think about? What are the qualities, the characteristics, the skills that you're even thinking about when you hear the word great leader. When you hear someone say and talk about a great leader, what are you thinking of? Who are you imagining? What person that you've experienced in your own life or a leader out there in your community are you imagining? What things are they great at? What are they working on? How are they leading? And today I just wanna give you five that I've found because as you are imagining and thinking about these people in your own life who are great leaders, certainly, there's more than five characteristics of a great leader. There are probably dozens or multiple dozens or even hundreds of characteristics and skills that great leaders are developing and constantly working on. But these five today I just think are ones that I wanna share with you because I truly believe that if we start to consider them in our own life, in our own leadership capacity, we'll be able to start transforming the way that we lead so we're even more impactful, even more effective for the people that we show up for every single day. So let's start with number one. So the number one skill of a great leader the skill of listening. And you might think, well, Jay, that's pretty simple. But my question to you is, as a leader, how frequently are you really truly prioritizing this skill of listening. You know, for most of us, what we want to do as leaders is we want to step up and we want to tell people what they need to do or give advice and give direction. And that's part of it. That's part of how great leaders show up. They give their perspective, they give their ideas, they share their wisdom and their advice and their expertise. But what I'd offer to you is how much, how frequently are you prioritizing listening? And the reason is until we truly can understand another person's perspective, until we can truly show someone that we're leading that we want to hear them, that they are heard, that they are being listened to, they're not gonna feel as comfortable, they're not gonna feel as safe in their environment, they're not gonna feel as safe at work or in the community or within the organization that you are leading with them. And what I truly just wanna remind you of with this skill of listening is that Listening truly is one of the most powerful, important skills of anyone, especially someone in a leadership role and someone, not just in a leadership role, by the way, but, but someone who truly wants to lead. Whether your title says you're a leader or not, 
if you're that person that just has that heart to be a leader, to step up and serve other people at a high capacity, at a high level, then this is a skill that you truly have to start to develop is the ability to listen. And then right along with this skill of listening is the skill of asking questions. You know, it's one thing to listen to someone. It's one thing to sit there or stand there or be in a meeting with someone and you're listening to what they say. But to really show another human being that we truly desire to understand where they're coming from, that our listening is not just because we think we're supposed to listen, but we're listening because we truly want to know them and care for them and serve them at a higher level. The next step of this process, the next skill that a great leader has to develop is this skill of asking questions. And it is a skill. So most people think, well, I can ask questions. I do it all the time. It's just, it's super easy. I've been doing it since I was a little kid. What I'd offer to you is that there truly are different levels of ability to ask questions. Some people ask very simple questions and that maybe starts to move the needle and they start to make progress and they can lead from that capacity. But what I'd suggest to you today is that if we can master our ability to ask questions more effectively, more often, then we position ourselves to really become the great leaders that we're destined to be. Why? Because when we start to ask questions, we start to get perspective from the people that we're leading. And once we have that perspective, we then can come from a more effective position, our own perspective on the situation. Our own perspective starts to widen and broaden and change and become more enriched as we ask more questions to the point that we understand more effectively what someone's trying to do as we listen to their responses. How often have you realized that asking one simple question can absolutely drastically change the way you and another person that you're leading view a situation? I mean, what happens when you start to ask questions, whether they're great questions or mediocre questions or just simple questions, when we start to ask questions, we start to change the way that we and another person view a situation. And as we can start to change and shift the way that we view a situation, that the way another person views a situation, then we can lead more effectively. We can start to move people in the, the direction that's needed for the organization, for the team, for the company, for the community, for the church, for the mission that you are on. So really being able to develop this ability to ask questions is vital for those of us who want to become the great leaders that we we're born to be. And again, it's not enough just to ask questions. So the third skill that a great leader must develop the ability to clarify. When we develop this skill of clarifying, what do I mean by that first and foremost? First and foremost, what I mean by clarifying is as you're listening and asking questions to the people that you lead or your clients and the people on your team, your organization, or the people that you might want to serve at some point down the road, whether they're prospective clients or prospective partners and team members, when we clarify, we're truly taking this question asking to a deeper level. We're taking it to the level of really working to understand the other person or the other people if you're speaking with a group. Now, how do we do that? We really work to clarify by asking better questions, deeper dive questions. So what I'd offer to you is, is it possible at this point in your life, in your career, in the way that you lead, in your position, to start really working to not just listen, not just ask questions, but to start clarifying responses and perspectives. So as an example, if uh, an employee or someone you're leading or a client says to you, you know, this is how I feel about this situation or here are my thoughts on this situation. Could it be beneficial to the overall situation, to your ability to lead effectively, if you then said, tell me more about that? Or why specifically do you feel that way? Or how did you come up with that perspective? Or how did you decide that's the way you view this situation? 
So as we start to clarify, we then start to understand. And as we start to understand, we then can lead more effectively. We can become great leaders. The more we understand, the more that we can clarify how people think, why they think the way they think, how they feel, why they feel the way they feel, how they're viewing a situation, why they view that situation that way, the better we can become at clarifying through asking questions, the better position we'll be to serve and lead at a higher level going forward. So the first three, listening. Number two, asking questions. Number three, clarifying. These are skills that we must develop to be extremely effective, great leaders, not just good leaders, great leaders. And then the fourth skill that we have to develop inspire. Great leaders inspire. This is nothing new. This is something that you've heard heard before. In fact, if you're an individual who truly cares about watching videos and getting training and learning and consuming the best of leadership skills and development and improvement and, and mastery of the ability to lead, then you may or may not have come across this TEDx talk called How Great Leaders Inspire Action. And it's by an individual named Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek wrote the book Start With Why. And the crux of his now very famous TED Talk is the fact that great leaders inspire other people, their clients, their teammates, their community, whomever is part of the organization or the team, those great leaders are able to find a way to inspire. And if all we're doing is listening and asking questions and clarifying, that's great. But to move people to action, to move ourselves to action, to move our teammates to action, to move our clients to action, it takes the ability to inspire. And to inspire truly is a skill that can and should be developed. So if you've not yet taken the time to really immerse yourself in this skill of inspiring people, it's something that I would highly suggest that you start to work on. So hopefully this has framed your mind right now today that to inspire is a vital skill. I'm not diving in today into how to inspire. That'll be a future video where I dive deeper into that. But for right now, just start to remind yourself of this truth that great leaders are great at inspiring action in other people. Great leaders are great at inspiring their employees. They're great at inspiring their clients. They're great at inspiring everyone on their team. Even if they're leaders above them, great leaders know how to inspire anyone and everyone around them to think in a more enriched way, to view the world more empowered way, in a more empowered way, in a way that says more is possible. I can do more. We can become more. This team can make it happen. Great leaders inspire. And what I encourage you with is this. If you can start to develop this ability to inspire, you will absolutely drastically set yourself apart from every other leader out there. Now, don't get me wrong. There are very good leaders. There are high quality leaders. There are high level leaders. There are people in great leadership roles that can listen, that can ask questions, that can clarify, that can get the job done, that can kind of move the needle. But here's the difference. For those of us who can find a way to actually inspire other people, to light them up inside with their own reasons why, not your reasons why, not the organization's reasons why, but their own reasons why first and foremost, why they care, why they want to take action, why they want to change, why they want to improve, why they want to step up and serve and be their own, their own leaders within the organization, within the team. When we can inspire that in another human being, we have raised our own level as a great leader. Now it takes time, it takes practice, it takes effort, it takes the desire and the willingness to actually inspire, to not just think, well, I'm going to try to inspire, but to go out and say, I will inspire to decide that this is a priority. And when we start to decide that to inspire is a priority for us, we then position ourselves to become that kind of person. So it's not just once in a while. It's an all the time kind of thing. Now I'm not saying you go out and you are motivating people all the time. Like we can do this, but you find that at the crux, at the core, of the things you say, at the crux, the core of the actions you take, the crux, the core of 
the questions that you're asking. There's this sense of inspiration. There's sense of, a sense of you are inspired. And because you are inspired, you find a way to get that into the other people that you're leading. And that in itself inspires them to feel better, to act more effectively, to move the needle for the team, to have a deep burning desire to make the team great, to serve the clients at an even higher level. So I'd encourage you that if you truly want to develop yourself as a great leader into a great leader, from wherever you are right now today, you must decide that to inspire is a skill that you have to develop. And then our fifth skill that we must develop, improve, and master to be a great leader influence. Great leaders influence. So as a leader, we can listen, we can ask questions, we can clarify, and we can be great at really deeply understanding another human being and where they're coming from. But that's never enough. The next thing we then have to do is to decide that once we know all of this information and we've, we've done the discovery process and we've asked the questions and we've clarified and we've really deeply listened intentionally to understand, then we step up and we inspire and we ask questions in an inspiring way and we move and work and act in an inspiring way, in a way that helps other people feel inspired. The people on our team can feel inspired by the way we show up, by the way we act, by this skill that we've developed, whatever that looks like for you. But then the next thing is not just, just to inspire and to get people to feel great and to understand their own why, but to take it a step further, it's to influence. And by the way, it's not just to influence other people, it's to influence ourselves. Great leaders are great at influencing themselves. And by the way, great leaders are also great at inspiring themselves. If we truly want to figure out how to inspire other people, we first and foremost have to inspire ourselves, isn't it true? And if we truly want to figure out how can we influence other people, our teammates, our clients, the people we serve to step up and take action or to think differently or to believe differently, if we want to influence them, if we want to be great at influencing other people, we have to first and foremost figure out how can we influence ourselves effectively, powerfully, and consistently. And as we start to develop these skills, especially this skill of influencing ourselves, then we can be better positioned to influence other people who we need to move to help and serve them. Because listen, it's great if you've got clients that you're serving with information and ideas and feedback, that's phenomenal. But at the end of the day, if we truly believe that we have something to serve another human being, if we believe that our mission that we're on with our company, our team, our organization is moving the needle for the world, it's impacting the world positively, it is making a difference, then to be able to influence ourselves and other people to act in a way and think in a way and believe in a way that moves the mission forward with great, powerful momentum, that's a skill that we must develop to be great leaders. So let's quickly review. We, as great leaders, or to become a great leader, we need to listen. We need to develop the skill of listening. We need to develop the skill of asking questions. But even further than just asking questions, we have to develop this skill of clarifying. So asking questions that help us to truly, more deeply understand the people that we're speaking with, their perspectives of the world, how they feel about things, the way they view a situation. And then the, another skill that we truly have to develop to become great leaders is the skill to inspire other people and even beyond that to influence and move people to action, to move people to think differently, to feel differently about themselves, about the work that we're doing, about the mission that we're on with the teams and the organizations that we serve. I'd suggest to you, my friend, that if you truly deeply desire to move from wherever you are today, if you're in a leadership role or you're not, but you desire to become a great leader, you desire to become an inspiring, influential person with the mission that you're on, with the work that you're doing, these five skills are vital for developing yourself, to moving yourself, to become and grow into that kind of person that can be a great leader, to change the world, to make a, an impact that influences this world in a positive way. And by the way, if you're willing to do that, if you have that kind of heart to serve this world, to step up 
and be a great leader, then we need you. We need you. I need you. You need you. Your team needs you. Your community, your clients need you to make this choice, to make the choice to step up to be a great leader. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not a, okay, I understand this. I watched JJ's video and now I can go change the world. To have that mindset is important, but we also have to know that it's a day-by-day process. It's skills that we have to develop and not just develop, but to be reminded of. You know, for the most part, you've probably heard these things before, but we need reminded of them. As one of my favorite former authors from the 1700s once said, or probably often said, Samuel Johnson, he was an author from the 1700s, and he said, listen to this, people need reminded more often than they need instructed. This is vital for us, especially if you want to become a great leader. Hear this, people need reminded more often than they need instructed. And that's why some of this is so simple, yet it's powerful when we can be reminded of it, hear it from another person, remind ourselves of it, and then continue to condition it into our lives as skills that we truly desire to develop so that we can lead and serve at an even higher level. So my friend, I hope what you'll do is you'll take action on this. Choose one of these things that you want to develop today, that you want to start to master right now. And what I'd love is for you to write in the comments below which of these five skills you most want to start developing right now today. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel if it would empower you to continue learning more about leadership skills and mindset and the attitude of what it takes to move yourself from wherever you are today to becoming the great leader that you were born to be, to be able to inspire and influence the world in a positive way and make the difference that you're meant to make in this world. Again, I'm JJ Pell and I look forward to continuing to serve you on more of these videos. Please let me know in the comments below that you've enjoyed this, what you've enjoyed from it, and your number one takeaway, the number one skill from these five that you truly want to go out and develop and master starting right now. Until next time, have fun and be awesome.